Hello, Deathbringer Draws here, and today we are going to be talking about some armor and weaponry that I have found in the second book as I was reading it for this series. Uh, note, there are some very important little notes here that I have actually found, and mainly we're going to cover a new type of armor, some of you may know it, some of you may not, that is mainly used to cover uh, uncovered areas and is very flexible. And that armor is called scale mail, and scale mail, just for reference. It is basically small plates of metal linked together like chain mail. And dragons have been shown to have both plate armor, scale mail, and chain mail, as well as dragons have, use, and know what swords are. They openly have revealed that not only does Peril name a sword in part of her quotes, in the uh, seventh book, uh, no, eighth, eighth book, sorry. But also, Tsunami mentions that the uh, Skywing um, War platform on the uh, on the Summer Palace's uh, pavilion has several swords as well as all these suits of armor, which included scale mail. Uh, from that book, we also know the dragons layer plate armor on top of uh, chain mail, meaning they could also layer plate mail on top of uh, scale mail. Now, what is scale mail? So, scale mail is, as I said earlier, lots of small plates of metal layered on, layered on top of each other, like chain mail. So basically, it's like scales, but they're metal. Uh, dragon claws have been shown to, pretty much, if they push against metal armor, it can actually hurt or even break that dragon's claws. Although, generally not break, generally it just hurts. A lot. Although, they can leave dents in metal, but it's very hard. Uh, but um, besides that, also we do know note that blades as well as piercing through with metal can pretty easily go through scales. They're not as hard as people think. They're not gemstone hard or whatever the first book says. That was that was early world building that has kind of been proven to be not real. But um, besides that. Uh, Basically, if they use the Skywing metal that was used in their chains and bindings and all that, that was supposed to be fire, extremely fire resistant and essentially fireproof, unless you got a blast furnace or a fe or a peril, or fire scales, uh, then it won't melt. But uh, the thing with that, we don't really know it's how heavy it is or what its exact stats are, basically. So unless we know that, we can't really determine if it's really used. I mean, combat for armor and weaponry. Uh, however, they are they are the same color generally and the seavings have been known to sh has been shown to use metals that are or are extremely like the skywing metals. So, it's really kind of yeah. But uh, if you could have essentially fireproof armor, especially uh, scale mail, that's extremely useful. Because well, chainmail is useful against slashes and some stabs, a lot a lot of stabs, unless they're really thin. It's not useful against fire, because it's got a bunch of holes in it, because it's chain links, it's, it's like that. It's not, you know, a solid plate like this. And so, with uh, plate, with you know, plate armor as well as scale mail, it's like scale mails like that, layered on top of each other, lots of them. And they're very small, and so it's decently flexible. You could wear like a uh, scale mail sleeve across their their neck, as well as under their armor, kind of in a full body see sleeve, essentially. And then on top of that, they could have some, you know, pieces of uh, uh, plate uh, plate armor. Um, and that's just really useful because up until now, we've been having to see neck dragon necks be covered in full on plates. In, like in the games and all that, but we don't need to do that. Because if we have scale mail, it can go all the way around it and not restrict movement, or at least, and restrict movement much less than plate would. And it also looks quite cool. <laughs> and uh, you could attach it to the helmet as a form of aventail, which is what it's called when uh, scale mail or chain mail basically hangs off of a helmet. Uh, or and is attached to that helmet, might I add, is kind of going down your neck and like usually like that. 
And so if that's attached, that can be extremely useful for guarding the neck, which is one of the most vital areas to protect in the whole Wings of Fire series. All the dragon's anatomy, if you get hit on the neck, if, if they can hit you on the underside of your neck, you're dead. At least to an extent. Uh, from what I remember, they do not actually have bones that do that, like a snake's. They just have a spine. <laughs> And I will have to check up on that again. I will actually pause the video and I'll go check the graphic novel. Alright, so either that's been skipped or I'm a moron. So, uh, skimming through the book, let me try and find it. It's in one of Clay's nightmares. He dreams of a skeleton dragon. And this happens in the book as well. Of, which is kind of presumable, so... We'll see, but give it some time. I passed it. It's a pretty cool scene, actually, if only I could find it and stop being an idiot. There we go, yeah. So, in this whole kind of scene, let's see if I can get a good you on it. Uh, you can see that dragon skeleton right there, and I know. Oh, wrong hand. And I know this probably isn't entirely canon, but we can clearly see very, a very clear diagram of a dragon skeleton right here. So now we know all about what it looks like, and at least to an extent, because the graphic novels to me are only kind of canon because they have a lot of in, uh, inconsistencies a lot of the time. However, I think that this can actually be used, because this does fit in with the main series. And look, there is no things that guard the neck. It's like a human neck, basically. And that puts it at a very weak position. Because that means, you know, basically, there's no bones to guard you from getting hit on the side of the neck. And there's nothing really stopping any types of, you know, blades cutting their throats. Because essentially their underbellies are just skin. It's not, it's not scales at that point. This is just skin underneath, on their underbellies and underneath their neck. So that underside of their neck is a huge, huge weak point. And if you can cover that in either plates or, or especially scale mail, uh, which could also take the form of brigandine, and brigandine is essentially what all studded leather really was. Uh, it was tons of tiny plates that were bolted together, and there was a canvas on top of them, so it was basically, it looked like leather that had a bunch of bolts in it, but those bolts were actually holding in place a couple hundred little tiny metal plates, and that also made it really easy to repair, because you don't have to recast like a whole solid piece of metal. You just have to take out and remake one small plate. And that also meant that it was a lot easier to make. You don't have to have as much skill to cast a whole solid plate, you just have to make them a bunch of small ones and bolt them together. Uh, that also makes it really flexible. So essentially that's what scale, that's the, scale mill is kind of the precursor to it to an extent. Only to an extent, but to, it could be used to the same degree. And um, if they can make use of scale mill well, again, you can have essentially a full body covering for a dragon, as well as with some plate on top of it, and still kind of keep a cool dragony look because scale mail can look a lot like scales and uh, it, it would actually make sense out of all the things in Wings of Fire for the dragons to style their armor after their own scales to make kind of like the Greeks did or supposedly did same with the Romans or they'd have the kind of you know chest plate that looks like a bunch of abs <laughs> They could, the dragons could have scale mail that looks like their scales, or something that looks like scales at least, and that would be awesome looking. And I believe actually in this book as well, we see some other examples of things like this. Uh, one with Burns armor right here. Uh, give me a minute. Uh, oh God. There we go. One with Burns armor right there, because that is at least yeah, that, that looks like scale mail, not really like chain mail. And you'll actually notice on her wings as well as her feet, there's a uh, there's plates right there that are intertwined. 
And uh, Bl Blister was also wearing a really cool looking crown. But um, besides this, when we actually see, uh, where is it? Well, first of all, take a gander at this. Uh, okay, yes. That color of those chest plates is very similar or even the same to the color of those gauntlets. Probably, or not gauntlets, but bindings. Probably meaning that, to be honest, I think the Skywings use that fireproof metal for their armor as well. And the Sea Wings apparently do that too, or something similar to it. And um, later in the book, we have a picture of uh, Burns' metal vest in, uh, in, you know, in person. We see it right here, very clearly, again. And uh, yeah, that still looks more like scale mail than plate armor, than a uh, chain mail. A lot. It looks a lot like uh, scale mail. And so we have multiple occurrences of scale mail. We have reason to believe that they make uh, armors out of fireproof material. And that's a big leap, if you haven't been able to tell by the video so far. That is a huge, like, advantage for dragon armor. So, well, I think I can actually leave it off here now. I think that's all I really wanted to cover. This one's a bit, I believe it to be a bit shorter. I don't know, I'll see afterwards. But, um, yeah, and so, well, we shall see. Uh, this is Deathbringer Draws, signing off.